of hard to keep this centered. All right. Um, the last terminal to assemble the case is the terminal for the positive input. Now, I'm going to point out that this terminal here does not have to carry as much current. It only supplies the current to the PC board and the fan and to drive the gates of the power MOSFETs. They don't really need to carry much more current than maybe 100 milliamps, but I use the same terminals to be consistent throughout. And again, this is an insulated terminal, so it gets the flat washer and fiber washer combination. So here's my flat washer. fiber washer. I'm going to send it through the hole and the end of the terminal is facing upward. See that? Straight up. Just to give it a point to start with, center it in the hole. Fiber washer, flat washer, lock washer, hex nut, Hand tight, and now I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to take this terminal and I'm going to bend it a little bit toward the case. The reason for that is because I'm going to send the cathode terminal of my transient suppression diode through this ring terminal to join up and meet the positive input terminal of the PC board, which is right in the very corner. So you can see how that's going to join up. All right. Same assembly procedure. Take my box wrench, tighten it, and I'm just going to let it rock, swing into place as I tighten it so that it, inside the case it's practically pointing right at that terminal. So I hope I can give you a good angle on this so you get an idea of what it looks like. All right, there it is. It is pointed right at the terminal at the corner of the PC board, which is the positive input terminal to the PC board. I can give you a different angle. that helps but you'll see in a minute again tight tolerances trying to fit a lot into this case At this point we're ready for a fan this is the first time I'm rejoining the fan to the heatsink since the machining process when I drilled it out for the case I set all my screws aside as well and I'm going to send it through the hole in the case. It's going to come up through that hole right between the MOS, right between the power MOSFETs. You can also see a little bit of the heatsink compound has oozed out. So I actually applied a little bit too much heatsink compound underneath this heatsink when I assembled it. Send it through. Just dress the wire neatly. And I'm somewhat anal about this. They all have to be the same. So bear with me. Huh. 
just place the handle for my screwdriver. Right. It's around here somewhere. Maybe that's what I heard fall. Hmm. Whatever. Now I'm going to take the leads and I'm just going to wrap it around MOSFET 1 underneath the positive terminal and I'm going to measure it up to cut it and trim it to be just long enough to meet the terminals on the PC board and cut off the excess. Pull it back out. Now I connect these a little differently. You can connect these directly to the positive and negative input terminals of the PC board and that's perfectly fine. But for an added measure of safety and transient suppression isolation for the fan, I connect the positive terminal to the down, downwind side of L1, which is the 100 microhenry 3 point or 4.3 ohm resistor that replaces R12. I'm sorry, R14. There is no R14. The 10 ohm half watt resistor can work, but it doesn't lend itself well to adding any additional load like I can do now with the fan. So I'm just going to strip a little bit off the end of this wire here and off the minus, pre tin it. pre-tin the negative terminal of the PC board just a little bit inside that terminal and I'm also going to pre-tin the top where L1 bends back down to the PC board with my tweezers I'll bring this wire back down lay it in Solder my negative lead first, and then my positive lead to the top of L1. Tuck that down inside. And the fan is assembled. I'm just going to tuck this fan wire down below the positive input terminal because now I'm going to be assembling the transient suppression diode, the MUR420.